Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. It's time for the Great Guitar Build-Off. So you guys may have seen my recent video about basically what's going on, what's coming up when, so I won't bother diving back into that. But for right now, we're gonna start our series on the Great Guitar Build-Off. Now there's a lot going on with the Great Guitar Build-Off. The main contest is done. Now there are the professional and invitational builds going on. Um, they're happening at different times this year and kind of backward from normal, but that's just fine. It's time for the invitationals and the professional builds. Now I've decided to approach my series a little bit differently this year. Um, usually what I've done is I've kind of done hint videos and stuff like that, trash talk videos and whatnot, and then a final video revealing the full build. Not doing that this year. This year there are so many people that it doesn't, I don't think it really makes sense for me to try and jump into trash talk videos and stuff. And because of the way that the layout is with the main contest being done, what I'm gonna do this year is a little different. I'm just gonna treat this like one of my normal series. I'm going to build the Crimson Guitars uncut kit for the Great Guitar Build Off the way that I would if I was doing a normal series. I'm gonna use some awesome stuff. I'm gonna tell you guys what products I'm using, um, templates and everything like that as I build it. And we're gonna do it in probably a four part series. They're gonna be slightly longer videos than normal, but it'll be a four part series is my plan. And the final video will come out on December 9th, which is I think the day before the deadline because that's the Friday and my videos usually come out on Fridays. So let me be clear, I'm not trying to separate this from the contest at all or anything like that. I'm just doing things a little differently because this fits more with what I usually do. And I think it'll be more informative for you guys. I'm gonna treat it kind of like one of my typical tutorial series this year. And so I hope that's okay with everybody. And if not, well, too bad, because that's what we're doing. This is gonna be episode one. You're gonna see that I'm using a slightly more conservative body type or body shape this year, um, trying to make it appeal to a larger audience. And also, this is what I wanted to do. I think you guys are gonna like it, and I hope you do, because this year, my understanding is it's a raffle, and I hope that I can raise as much money as possible through the raffle, so I wanna make sure that lots of people are interested in it because I'm supporting a very important cause. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know about this one, the Stollery Children's Hospital here in Edmonton, Alberta. I think it's the biggest children's hospital, at least in this province. It does tons of great work, and it's helped some people that are important to me, so that's what we're going with. And uh, I think we should go ahead and jump right into it now. Hope you guys enjoy the build. We're going to move into voiceover and you can see what we're working on. Let's go. So, of course, we're starting here with our uncut kit from Crimson Guitars, the biggest sponsor and basically the host of the great guitar build-off. This is a beautiful piece of ash. I think it's probably a two-piece body. It's got all of the routing done and everything. And, uh, yeah, they leave you kind of at liberty to go ahead and choose your own body shape and, and get to work on it. Not exactly a beginner kit, but definitely an interesting one. And this year, everybody in the Invitational is using the same kit. We're all using the raw, uncut, standard kit. Um, so it kind of levels the playing field. It's going to be very interesting. You can see the general shape that I've chosen here. It's, it's my outline in pencil. It's fairly straightforward. It's got kind of that single cutaway look with a little bit of a change. And of course, the dimensions are different than, say, you know, a standard Les Paul or something like that. Now what I've done here, and you'll know this if you've been watching my channel for a while, is I've ordered this, I, I kind of made this shape, so to speak, and then I ordered a set of templates for this guitar. Um, I ordered those off Maximum Guitar Works, and that's what I'm going to be using in this video. That's what I'm going to be using for this build. So Steve over at Maximum Guitar Works, the, the man's a genius. He, he helped me out with this. He made these for me, the templates, and that's what I used what I'm going to be using for the work and, and what I use to go ahead and draw the outline on here. So if you're not familiar with his stuff, check it out. I'll have a link to that in the description. He has standard templates and then he does custom ones as well and that's what he's done for me here. I, I did up the drawings and he improved on them a little bit, smoothed them out and stuff for me because I'm not that good with computers. And this was the product which you'll see in this video. So that's what I'm doing to begin with. I'm cutting this out based on the outline that I've drawn. You'll see there's kind of a knob at the bottom and one kind of on the upper horn area, so to speak. Um, you'll see the purpose of those in a minute here. But I'm just trying to cut nice and close to those lines. Not too close. I'm going to go in with the router after and, and, of course, get everything to the proper shape. But as close as I can without, you know, it getting risky because we don't want to take off too much meat with the router. That's not really what it's designed for. This is not only faster, but also safer and easier to take it off with the bandsaw. If I didn't have a big bandsaw like this, which I know a lot of people probably don't, 
I would be using a big jigsaw instead. That's what I used the first year that I did this. I did the whole cutout with a jigsaw and then went in with the router after that and it worked out just fine. So that's our bandsaw work done. Now the template that I'm using is kind of designed to have a longer neck pocket than this kit is designed for, I guess. Um, in that, you know, that neck pocket on the kit is only routed so high up. There's lots of extra wood to work with, so that's not a problem. And I could have gone and routed it further right off the bat, kind of on the uncut kit before doing the outline. But this works just as well. Um, and so I've just gone in and cut off the excess there with a little handsaw. And now I'm drilling right where I need this template to line up. So what he's got here is he's got some some hardened steel bushings on the template and you leave those little kind of knobs hanging out to secure it and just put a piece of dowel in there. I learned this all from Steve from his channel. Check that out. I put a little piece of quarter inch dowel in these ones and I add a little bit of water to it to expand it to make sure that this is being held in place nice and snug and then I don't have to worry about my template moving. It's easy to pop off after. Um, you may find yourself tempted to use something else like I, I've used a bolt before to hold this down a couple of quarter inch bolts that works fine but I'd be careful about it you don't want to risk damaging that steel uh, it's hard to damage but it is possible now the first thing I did after getting this template set was go out and buy this rotor table so I've used that a few times now it's very helpful and I'm using a four flute cutting bit from Radian Tools you guys have seen this before works really well I'm going to tell you in advance here, I've got this rotor set too fast when I do this. Uh, I ended up slowing it down later, but it was a little too quick for this job. One of the really nice things, you know, everything about these templates is awesome. So I'm going to talk about them some more here. They're transparent. They've got everything you need on them. They've got things written on them. They're, they're awesome. But one of the great things about them from a safety perspective is they've actually got, they come with these paddles and they've got threaded inserts in them to thread in these paddles. So, yeah, you don't have to worry about it slipping or anything like that. It's just better control, which allows for better routing and, importantly, safer routing. And that's what Steve's done. He's designed this in a way that makes it as foolproof as we can get for a job like this. These are, you know, this stuff isn't easy. It's easy for stuff to go wrong. But he's put a lot of time and effort and thought into making it more difficult for things to go wrong, which I really appreciate. So as we work our way through this, let's talk a little bit about the shape here. As you can see, like I said, it's a single cutaway. It's a little different, a uh, little different shape than, you know, your classic one. It's got a little bit different horn on it, something a little bit more aggressive, and that fits better with the types of shaping techniques that I like to use and the shapes that I like to create. So it's a little bit, the horn at least, is reminiscent of the other two great guitar build-off guitars that I've done. Uh, if you're familiar with those ones, you'll get to see what I mean here as this build progresses. But I've left a little bit more body to work with this time, a little bit kind of more classic um, curves and stuff like that on this one that give me more room for shaping work as opposed to cutting stuff right away. So on my other two builds, I also had a very large cutout right where the forearm of the right arm goes. Um, on this one, not quite the case. There's no cutout there as you can see, but you'll see what I do with that. It's a little bit different than your typical arm carve, what I have in mind, and I think you guys will like it. I have tested it out, and for me, I find it very, very comfortable. Now, here, I'm cutting these knobs off because I'm not going to be using the templates anymore, but of course, if I were doing a scratch build, which is what I have those templates for, I would still need these. I would use them to do the neck pocket route. I would use them to do, well, I would have done that first. I would use them to do the pickup routes, I'd use them to do the back cavity route, get things drilled out for the bridge, pretty much everything. It's a, uh, a full template system, not just a template to set up the curves of the body, not just to do the outline, it's for kind of the whole deal. So there are several of them, they're the best templates that I've ever seen, I highly recommend them. Feel free to check out the link in the description if you're interested. Um, this guitar in particular, is a kit so I only needed the one but for the scratch build that I'm doing that I'll be showing within the next couple series if you will you'll see that there's a whole setup for the neck and everything like that so a fairly straightforward process to get to this point where this actually basically looks like a guitar now we're pretty much there 
uh, in terms of the basic outline. I'm just going in and sanding that all smooth, getting rid of a couple marks that uh, the rotor left, mostly because I had it going too fast, but also just because, you know, wood's got a particular grain and sometimes there are chips. That's how it goes. Even with those nice four flute bits from Radian, sometimes that's what you end up with. But no problem. I go in now with my oscillating belt sander here. I really like this one. This one is from Rigid. Triton's got one as well. I mean, if you go on Amazon through the link in the description, you can find, uh, I think, the Rigid one, or you can find the one from Wen, W E N, which is cheaper, but I think very similar. Lots of options out there. Really good tool. I, uh, I'm happy that I, I picked this one up. So. I'm using that to sand off the remainder of those knobs that I've already sawed off just by hand and basically get this shape smoothed out because now once that's done it's going to be time to start on the actual shaping work. You can see I've also cut out, uh, I didn't film it, but I cut out the headstock. So this came with kind of a standard six in line paddle headstock that's the typical with the crimson uncut kit. Um, I used my headstock shape, which again, Steve has created a template for, but that's for doing it before it's actually turned into an X. So I basically just use that to create the outline to trace it on there. And then I cut it out on the bandsaw and there's a little bit of sanding work left to do on it. And that's about it. It'll be ready to go. So I mentioned earlier the kind of discrepancy between how my template is set up, how, how my design is set up and how this kit is set up and so here I noticed this again because I went to test everything here and make sure everything looked good and check just what I was dealing with in terms of that pocket and so I, I gotta make some lines here because the neck is already carved on this model of kit which means it's carved all the way down to where it's intended to join on the heel and that heel joint is intended to work with the neck pocket as carved into the raw kit my neck pocket extends too far for that and it creates a nice long binding surface and everything which I I think is a great design but it doesn't work so well with this kit so I've got to chop part of that neck pocket off so I don't end up with a really really weird neck joint um, I'm doing my typical bolt-on not a screw on but an actual bolt-on for this one if I were gluing it I could have gone ahead and done a glue up and then carved it all in there so that it came out looking even but um, the joint that I'm doing is my favorite type of neck joint it's going to be fairly well blended and it's going to be bolted on so at this point um, I'm finishing this up getting the sanding done and everything in my garage didn't want to go back to the shop to where my bandsaw is so I just used my large Bosch jigsaw with a nice long high quality bit on it kind of cut that part up it's tough because there was nothing on top to rest the bit against, or sorry, to rest the platform of the saw against, but it's fine. We made it work, and now I'm finishing up that shape with the sander, making sure everything looks nice and even. So we'll speed that up a bit as we have for a few of these parts, um, but this is going to be very close to my kind of personal shape that I'm using for my Angove guitar scratch builds and whatnot, um, which you guys will see soon. But now you have a pretty good sense of what that looks like. So testing it again, making sure that, you know, the neck doesn't look ridiculous where it joins up with the body. And at this point, I am happy with it. I've sanded the headstock smooth. I've sanded the edges of the body smooth. And this thing is basically ready to get some carving work done. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is just make sure that it's nice and set up in terms of actually assembling it. Um, I want to get the holes at least in place, kind of the pilot holes. I don't need to do all the drilling for the string ferrules and all that yet, but I need to get the pilot holes in place. I want to make sure they're in the right place and that I know where they're going before I start doing a whole bunch of carving because later on I'm going to have to do the rest of the drilling for those and I want to make sure that the ferrules are able to be inset properly and there's plenty of meat there for the neck to be against and all of that. So getting the pilot holes in place you if you can obviously want to use a drill press for this I don't have one at home right now so I use this guide to make sure that my holes were perfectly vertical and uh, that was that got those in place ready to go and then use those as guides to just mark the neck I'm not really drilling into the neck really yet I, I want to make sure that the holes in the neck are perfectly 
you know, align. So I'm going to take that to a drill press. But I just want to get them marked right now, make sure that everything looks good and is going to be easy to assemble. And then the last few holes that I need to set up on this thing before it's ready to go into carving mode are for this back pocket cover. So this one came without holes. The back pocket was just taped on there, which makes sense because maybe you want to do like a magnet inset or something like that and cut in a little place to pop it out with your finger or something. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to go with the classic four little screws and that's what I'm doing. So I pop that off, check and make sure that the distance I've cho chosen from the edge is going to work with the way that this is carved and get that set up. And now I'm just going to make my four little pilot holes and we're good to go. So guys, that is it for episode one. We've got our shape in place and in the next episode, we're going to get to work on the fun stuff. We're going to start doing the actual carving work. So if you haven't already, check out the great guitar build off, check out the invitational builds, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.